Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this particular video we're going to get into uh, actually creating part drawings. So up until this point we've really been uh, hammering home on how we model correctly and some of the tools that we use in modeling. Well now we're going to take that and we're going to transfer it over onto a piece of paper. Um, so let's go ahead and what I want to do because there is there has been a divide uh, between actual 2D drawings and uh, some industries and companies shifting to more of a 3D model based annotation. You'll, you might hear that term quite a bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with our U bracket that we created in our last video. I'm going to use that instead of creating a brand new part. But what I want to do first, I'm going to open it up and we're going to talk about how we can use 3D annotations on our part in the model space. Uh, it's something kind of relatively new, uh, but if you look at our ribbon up here, we have an annotate tab. On that annotate tab, we have a bunch of new features in Inventor 2018. So. We have tolerancing, we can get uh, our datum reference frames, we can create tolerances, dimensions, whole thread notes, servicing notes, leader text, uh, profile notes or uh, future control frames if you're familiar with GDNT, and general notes. So basically what we would do instead of creating a 2D drawing is we would just go in and I'm going to use my dimension tool here and simply add in my annotations on the part itself. Bring this one over here. So now I have those two radii dimension for the curve, but I can also go in and say go from center to center there between my holes I could also if I wanted to add in whole notes and the nice thing about having these what's called uh, whole notes is it'll give us the distance as well as the diameter for these different holes. You can kind of see that we just go through and we put all of these different dimensions on our part in 3D model space because now we can export that model into 3D PDFs that allow people who may not have these CAD programs to look at these parts and see the measurements. All the while that in these 3D PDFs they could sit there and rotate the part around and look at it as if they actually had the part there in their hand. So it's pretty useful for uh, those who are not familiar with CAD. It allows uh, these non-experts to look at these parts and either review them for quality purposes or if it's a, a customer see if it's what they want so this is uh, the 3d model annotations and they're really not a whole lot different than how we would normally dimension a sketch or once we get to drawings how we would dimension drawings so it's pretty neat what what we've got now but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close out my U bracket. I'm not gonna save any of those changes. Now I want to get into uh, actually creating a drawing. So let's go to new and under templates I'm just gonna start a standard inch drawing. Now here is the paper space that uh, we were talking about in the previous video. 
Uh, this is the, the paper that we basically put views of our models on. So in model space we do everything full size, one to one scale. Uh, we can scale down views here in our drawing to accommodate whatever size of paper we have. So if you've ever had CAD experience before and you're just now getting into uh, solid modeling or Inventor in particular, uh, sit back because I'm going to blow your mind. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my base view up here under my place views and I'm going to go and hit in my little magnifying glass in my folder here. That way I can select the actual part that I want to drop in. And there we go. Wrong spot. There's my U bracket. So here, whenever I go to place a view, it gives me this front view of my U bracket. If I wanted to do a side view, I could just rotate my view cube here, get the right view. If I wanted to do a back, a left, uh, a top, or if I wanted to do an isometric view, I can do that as well. For those of you who don't know what isometric views are, they're basically 3D views. But here I have my base view. I've got my scale, I can change the view label, I can turn that view label on or off. In my styles, I can control my hidden lines if I want them there or not. If I want the view to be shaded, to have color in it, I can select that under styles as well. But what I want to show you, for those of you who have had cat experience in like AutoCAD or something else, is I have my view here, and I'm going to move my mouse above it. You kind of see it creates that uh, green dashed box. I'm going to click once I see that and it gives me another view. And again, if I bring it straight to the right, I get another view. And if I move it up to the top right here of my view, I can get another view. And when I hit OK, it creates all of those views for me, adds in all the hidden lines. I mean, it is fantastic. Uh, I myself started out uh, drafting by hand and then moving on to AutoCAD, so uh, solid modeling programs blew my mind. As you can see, I mean, once we have it, the part modeled up, drawings are fast and efficient. They, they are just extremely fast. So there I have my three views. Got my front, my top, my right side, and then I always like to have an isometric of the part on here as well. So we've got our views. Now we move on to adding annotations onto this. And in our drawing environment, we have the annotate tab right here, which gives us every symbol that we could have ever dreamt of or needed on a 2D drawing. There's our general dimension. We can swap between dimension styles, between baseline ordinate chains. Uh, we have our different notes for different features like holes, uh, chamfers, punches, bends, our uh, text options. <clears throat> if we just want to add in text or have basic leader text. Uh, sketch symbols are symbols that we define ourselves that we can drop in as uh, kind of like stamps onto the drawing. Uh, and then inside of my little symbols box here, I'm going to click on this little double arrow and you can see that it has everything that we could ever need. So if you're familiar with gd and I mean there's our feature control frame, we've got our datums, our different styles of datum callouts, uh, surface symbols, welding symbols, I mean it is all here. And then we finish it off with our centerline tools right next to it. So I mean there's there's a lot of stuff in this annotate tab that we can use. So one thing I do want to talk about though is there are multiple different ways we can drop dimensions onto our views on drawings. Uh, one way is we can retrieve dimensions straight from the model itself and use those on the drawing. And it's really neat 
when we do this because if we change that dimension on the drawing, it changes the model itself. So that's what uh, we talked about previously with associative functionality uh, is that everything is linked and interlocked together inside of the inventor program. So if I change my model, I see an instantaneous change on my drawing and vice versa. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come in here and we're going to retrieve the dimensions for our U bracket on our front view. And if we look up here, this is our retrieve model annotations. So zoom in here. I had my view selected. I picked retrieve. It gives me sketch and feature dimensions. Now uh, new in 2018 you can also retrieve 3D annotations as well but we didn't save those to our U bracket but say that we did have 3D annotations on it we could easily just grab those and put them on the drawing as well but we're going to stay with our sketch and feature dimensions and our source we could select features we can do selected parts uh, we don't have an assembly so we're just going to stick with features and I'm going to hit okay and now you can see it gives us a bunch of dimensions pretty much every dimension we used on the sketches and in our features and I'm gonna go in and some of these come in real funny because they are really dimensions that were applied in a different viewing plane so they appear flat and I'm just going to delete the ones that I don't need and here is one downside of retrieving dimensions like this uh, is because they originate where the sketch originated from so as you can see here is our diameter call out for our center hole which is way up here but since our sketch is down here on the base that's where that dimension comes from so then we get into the problem of we have to go in and readjust extension lines and then you see there like it messed it up to where it took away the diameter symbol so there is some some headache when we retrieve dimensions like this and same thing again how my extension lines are being weird so I have to adjust those there we go and we'll just bring out a cut here adjust those extension lines uh, some dimensions we may not even use whatsoever like our dimension here we used to center up the hole or not the hole but the rectangular cut there and you'll notice too that this guy is a diameter dimension which does us no good because we don't have a diameter here we have an arc and by uh, the ASME standard we have to dimension arcs with a radius symbol just like we have here for our art section so you can kinda of see how we have that issue as well so I'm gonna delete that dimension out so not bad though I mean we've got four usable dimensions on this particular view that I want to keep and now just because I retrieve dimensions doesn't mean I can't use the general dimension command to add in and we'll uncheck that that extra dimension that I'm missing now if I wanted to on any of these dimensions that I've retrieved I can right click on them and it gives me an option to edit model dimension and if I click on that it kind of gives me the edit dimension box that I would see in my 
actual modeling area. And if I change that, it will change my arc in the drawing and that arc in my part as well. So right clicking and editing the model dimension will give us that capability. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and do that just because uh, I don't need to at the moment. And one last thing before I call this front view uh, pretty much well and done is that I need to add in center lines and center marks. So up here in our little center line area, I've got a basic center line. I have a center line bisector, which allows me to pick two uh, lines or edges and it will create a center line directly in the middle of them. Uh, my center mark, and then if I have a pattern, I can do a centered pattern as well. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use my center line bisector on my two hidden holes right here to give them center lines. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to click on my arc here. And adjust it up and give it a center mark for the circular arches. So there I have the kind of the basic uh, understanding of how to create a part drawing. So we just bring our views in, we can either retrieve dimensions or add dimensions ourselves, then we just make sure that we have the correct uh, annotations on there like our center lines or uh, other symbols that are necessary. So I'm going to quickly go ahead, I'm going to finish up the rest of these views with correct dimensions and then we'll talk a bit more about some other things we can do on this drawing. So there we go. Got all of my dimensions added on there. Oh, no, I lied. I did miss a little center hole up here. And that brings me to a good point here because look how it calls out that hole. It's giving it a radius. Uh, that is because it is on a curved surface and generally we don't get completed holes. Uh, we get two uh, different radius arcs that are meet in the center and kind of taper down to create that hole on the curved surface. So that's why it gives us that radius on that particular hole. What I can do though, whenever I'm in my selection here, I can right click, I can go to my dimension type and switch it over. Now something else I want to point out. Uh, some of the, those who have CAD experience or GDT experience probably already know this, but if I have similar sized dimensions for similar, similar features like my two arcs here in the end are the same my two half inch diameter holes are the same I can go in and I can just edit my dimension to add in and reflect that there are two two half inch diameter holes and I can omit that dimension I can also go in and use what's called typical, which typical means any arc you see is going to be radius 1 unless you specify otherwise. So looking at radius 1 typical, I know that this one and this one are radius 1. So there are shortcuts to uh, placing dimensions onto our drawings like this. And one of the last things I wanted to get into, uh, a lot of times we might include 3D views onto our drawings. Uh, I always like to go in and shade those 
And so the easiest way to do that is if we double click on that view, it brings us up to the drawing view editor. This shader right here, select that and hit OK. And it will add the material shade to the component. And we can do that too on our base part views as well. My only conniption with that is that anytime you have it shaded like that, it becomes very hard to see some of the dimensions. So generally, I don't, I don't shade my standard views. Uh, any 3D views I'm using or views uh, expressly for just showing the design off, I will usually shade those. Uh, everything else though you want to leave as uh, object and hidden lines. So I mean that's a quick foray into drawings and pretty much uh, how we create them starting off uh, in Inventor. Uh, like I said, eventually we're going to get into some more advanced stuff with the drawings, uh, how to create some different views, but uh, just for the introduction to it, learning how to place our base views and get our dimensions on there is uh, one of the key aspects. So thank you for watching, and uh, until next time, be inventive.